Good to see you all. Um, some people from the uh, last dearmoring training, some people from other dearmoring trainings or from other equations, and some people from somewhere else. So I'll just give you a little bit of an overview. So this is the monthly Monday call from the Academy. So this is a 90-minute call that happens every week on Monday where, you know, different people from different... Um, areas and from different places um, know me from coming in specifically in the dynamic of the somatic consent dynamic and how that use in your life so individually for you uh, in your relationships and in your profession that can be a hands-on profession as a facilitator in any other kind of work and some of you might have a profession in this field and consent and touch and sensuality and sexuality is an important theme for some of you not for some of you want to use that in your private life in your intimate life in your relationships so that you literally have access to this dynamics uh, so we um, meet every monday and today as the monthly monday is free and open for everybody who can um, ask questions join and see um, how I'm doing that online and who is connected and if you resonate with these people and I will guide through the hands meditation that some of you have done and some of you have not done it and it's always a good refresher to to practice that and then we go into open Q's and A's and today specifically I will show where the shadows are, how to find the shadows, how to use the shadows and uh, for everybody who has been in the training uh, ending last Thursday it was, um, you have uh, experienced that already but not everybody here can maybe remember that so it's a great fresh up and then we can talk about shadows, how to use them, how to find them and how to avoid them and um, how the entire system can be your kind of empowerment tool to go deeper into that. Before I start, and because we are a bigger group, um, I don't want to open the mic now, then it takes forever. Um, but please write into the chat right now, when you tune into your body, into your sensing, feeling body, how do you feel right now? What's the feeling that is most alive for you right now? Please feel free to write it in the chat or keep it for yourself. Peace, hot, really tired. And whatever you feel is absolutely welcome. Anxiety, anticipation, exciting, insecurity, heavy and comfortable. Okay, and um, so keep that feeling alive. I just want to show you a little bit here. Um, I'm living in Stockholm and um, outside of Stockholm, not in Stockholm, in, in a place called Gustavsberg. I have a nice place here. So I'm sitting in my studio where I do sessions and my online streaming. So I have a lot of online classes and stuff that I do. So my passion at the moment in life is doing stuff with Cam, live streaming, like right now. And so being with people around the world in this live environment. And I have a setup with three cameras and I just want to show that with you because I love it. <laughs> so I have a little, a little um, stream deck here. I just want to show you. Uh, this is how it looks. And when I push the buttons, I have different camera angles uh, I want to show you with. So this is my front camera angle. Then I have a side camera angle so you can see more from the outside how it looks. And then I have more an angle from above where you can literally see me sitting on the table and this is as well how I will show the hand meditation so that you have literally a visual to that what we're going to do and I will continue letting people in with going back here on the front camera and uh, I love playing with cams and uh, I love educating people who want to do that as well it's just my new passion it's just really fun and there's so much possible doing online with chem. Um, so I've created a new thing that I call erotic chem therapy. So being with people one on one in, in sessions and then guiding them into deeper dynamics about their um, erotic reality, about shadows and kind of letting feelings cook up in a very um, 
relatable, healthy way. Okay, so that said, let's begin. And the invitation for each and one of you is to take something in your hand. And I change my camera here again. So any kind of object, I have kind of a piece of wood, can be anything that is around you. So a little round kind of lead. So the invitation is to just lean back. Lean back and go in a comfortable position. And that what you have there in your hands, just to make connection with it. So the first connection is um, labeling it. So what's the name, what's the purpose, how to use it what it's made of, what it's made for, maybe where it's made, all this kind of cognitive, rational thinking stuff and so that the mind can rest. And then I invite you to go a level deeper into the haptic. So what's the temperature of it? Is it soft or is it solid, round or sharp? Is it heavy, so the density? Is it fragile, or can it easy break? Is it so you get a lot of information that you can collect when you tap into the haptic of anything. And the next level is more like the sensual, the level of of joy. So, and to find that is the invitation to slow down your speed by half and slow it down by half again so that you get really slowly. And go on a journey of exploration. And we do that for about five, six minutes or so. And feel totally free to either close your eyes or open your eyes or experiment with both as you like. If you feel like to switch your camera off or put it aside, that's fine as well. So that you have the opportunity to really drop in. And what we're looking for is kind of this tinglish electromagnetic sensual sensation there in your skin, in your fingertips. And that might be either between your fingers or on your palm, maybe your fingertips or your nail bed. When you find a spot, then the invitation is to just to feel, to sense. So nowhere to go, nothing to get nowhere to arrive just to sense and to feel and the slower you go the more you will feel Where you are in the mood of sensing and feeling, the invitation here is just to recognize that you are in action by choice towards a felt sense of pleasure.
and just allow yourself to just drink it all in. So let your hands just be the antenna of your feeling, sensing being. Doesn't mean anything. And then why you just sensing and feeling and your mind wanders or feelings or other emotions coming up. That's totally fine and welcome. Bring your attention straight back to this experience there in your hands. And that's this awareness training to keep on noticing and let your attention root a little bit deeper into yourself. you to slow down your movement till they stop stay there for a moment and just relax your entire body your shoulders and just notice what you notice within yourself And then your own speed, your own time. I invite you to opening up your eyes again. Bring your attention back to the screen. And at this point, if you feel relaxed enough to open up your microphone and share, what do you notice? How do you feel? What do you notice about doing this hand meditation just for a few minutes here? Please feel free to unmute yourself and just speak in. If you feel more comfortable, want to raise your hand, raise your hand and then um, find either or. And everything that you feel and that you felt is an important information for you. And it's absolutely true in your experience. So there's nothing wrong or everybody noticed something. So please feel free to express what you notice. Yeah, so at one point I had both of my hands like this and was slowly touching and feeling my own skin was... Yeah, that's when I got the got more sensation and it felt sort of therapeutic rather than sort of cold and unattached as I was with the pen. Mm. Nice. Thank you, Claire. Yes, please. Um I had a coin or I have a coin. And I had the symbol side and I had a round side, but I was really curious when I came to the edge. And then my sensations got really tingling and um, increasing because I felt that, that the shape will turn and the edge gives me a really an intense sensation and I'm really looking forward when I will when the shape will change and the, just the 
little moment before the shape will change from flat to the round um, gave me tickling sensations. And I felt really soft and white inside and my skin was, um, yeah, like high volt electricity just on the, on the skin of my fingers. But the same way I felt really relaxed and soft inside. Mm. Yeah, so both aspects. Thank you. I can share. Please. Yes. Um, I really love this practice, especially when I have the item in my hand and then I slow down, feel like my whole being slows down with it. And it comes this wave of relaxation and I just feel like such a good feeling. And then I take a deep breath immediately. Well, you know, the minute it's like slowed down and then everything slows down. Also a thing I've been experiencing last few times I've done this practice is the meditative state and the spaceness that my hands are not part of me in a way. It's like, and they are, can be like so far, far away. It's like, I don't know how to describe it. Like I'm this space and then I'm feeling something and it's, it's this part, part of this huge space, but it's not, it can't be something else than my hands can be like a totally different being it's or not a being it's i, I don't know how to describe it but it's fun it's, mm. <laughs> it's interesting mm. nice. thank you thank you so i um was touching this pottery spanish bowl <laughs> and uh i i didn't feel so much the electricity um, but I did feel the relaxation in my body, like um, she was just describing. It was really beautiful. I feel so much. Um, I was feeling anxiety before, and I don't, I just feel so much more calm. And then also just feeling the the pottery and how it warms up under my touch. And then there's some little sections that are glazed so the difference the texture of the smooth and um versus the raw pottery and then you know the different shapes of the horns so it was like quite a complex object to feel and sense into and um i just love the feeling of the pottery the clay it's grounding for me it's the material itself um i feel like it also helped to calm me as well mm. so that was cool. So question to all of you, could you notice as well that this was having a calming, relaxing um, impact on your body, affecting your state of being? Yeah. So it's a, it's a fantastic practice of self-regulation. And it is because when you actually do that for about three minutes plus, you release somewhere in your central brain um, oxytocin that is inhibiting the release of cortisol and adrenaline and that is calming you down. So your nervous system literally has a shift change of state and, um, and that's very nourishing. So if you are a little bit dysregulated or if you're nervous or if you can't sleep or, you know, if you can allow yourself to train your awareness and bring that to this sensation and continue doing that, you will relax and you fall asleep. I've done that many, many times. It works perfectly. And then who of you had the experience that you were attuned to the object and how it felt, but then you felt your mind kicking in or you had something coming up that your attention changed. Yeah, so. And that is quite sometimes an effort to bring your attention back to the hands, to, the, to this experience. Yeah? And that can flip back and forth. So this is the invitation is to do that regularly, that you literally train your attention to be focused on one point. And what that does, it just allows you to train your capacity to be present with what is in the moment without jumping from one thing to another, you know. And specifically in this time of, you know, uh, 
short and real videos on YouTube and everybody has kind of an, or most people have an attention span like a, a minute or half a minute or even less. This is a great exercise and um, mechanism to bring your presence, your your intuitive, your attention back into your skin and, and, and feel. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. So then um, I would like to show a little bit more. I've prepared some um, uh, slides, keynote slides I will show we, uh, you and then I guide you from there straight into the shadows and then we just go in opening the mic and see if there are some questions. So that will take about, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. So what we have done now is in the somatic consent engagement system, what I call the base, yeah, is your capability of feeling. It's related to self-love, to self-care, your, you know, everything you have a right to and the responsibility for your feelings, your uh, limits, your boundaries, so everything that belongs to your domain individually. So this is what I call the base. Let's see, it's like a little box, you know, and everything in the box, this is what belongs to you and is literally everything that is related to your individual being. So the second piece is why waking up the hands is so important because it belongs to your base and that belongs to your individual capability of feel and to sense. And that what we just have done is a pretty complex but super simple exercise. It is about the uh, sensory and uh, sensory inflow of what you can feel with your skin and the motor that is sending impulses to your um, hands, to your limbs, to your you know, body and to move. So from a somatic perspective, you have done a very complex task. So you were moving by choice towards a felt sense of pleasure. And specifically when it comes to intimate connection and when it comes to touch, sensuality and sexuality, this is one of the key components that every human being needs to have in place to be capable of being able to be in action and feel for yourself. Yeah. Um, so if this is not in place, most people have different um, dynamics at place. So um, specifically when it comes to intimacy and proximity. So um, we can might talk about that a little bit later. Anyway, so back to your base. This is what I um, do within the base, the dynamic of the uh, three-minute game as I call that the engagement zones. Yeah? And this is a structure that is based on the four dynamics based on the um, three-minute game. So that when you play that with another person, that you go in action for yourself the other person goes in action for themselves, you go in action for the other person, and the other person goes in action for you. So this is creating these four different things. So it's either your action or it is their action. And it's either for you, so what you desire or make a request about, or it is for them, so what other people, um, um, or in this case, what your limits are and um, what are you willing to let's say it that way so and then we have this dynamics here when it's your action and it's for you it's the permission line yeah and in this case the may i question uh, may i do such and such and then the person you play that with need to give you this allowance yes you may do that yeah or everything that is not an um, uh, permission that is an agreement um, that is based on the question will you do such and such for me and then the other person needs to agree within their limit yes I can do that yeah. so this is pretty simple it's pretty uh, straightforward and pretty easy and everybody who has seen that kind of understands that this is a map like a compass so where you can literally detect human engagement and human connection and then 
my invitation today is I want to go into the shadows. Yeah? And the shadows are based on this side here when it's for you um, and your desires and making a request about what you want. It's not always easy to ask for what you want. So the question here is, why don't you ask for what you want? And you don't need to put that in the chat or you know, don't need to just unmute your microphone. But this is an important, critical question for all of us. And you might want to write your own list based on this question. Why don't you ask for what you really want? And there can be different dynamics in place. It's vulnerable, never learned it. What if I get a no? What if I get a yes and I don't like it? What if people think I'm a perf or I'm, I'm, I'm crazy for asking that? Um, I expose myself when I say what I want and then I can be more fragile. You know, there are so many different reasons. And in the training, we talked about that um, quite in depth and experience that quite in depth. But the question is, if you can't ask for what you want, what are you doing instead? Yeah. Again, first question is, why don't you ask for what you want and what are you doing instead? And that guides us into the first dynamic of the shadows. And that is when there is no permission, but still an action. And the shadow dynamic they are most common that makes this entire dynamic for not asking for what we want or doing it anyway into this realm of, you know, we becoming more, you know, it's a stealing dynamic. It's a, the uh, rape is happening there, the perpetrator or abuse or uh, violation and war. So this is a pretty hardcore kind of emotional and psychological um, difficulties that most people face that makes the dynamic asking for what you want for yourself for many people difficult. And here in this instance, this is how to find them if there is a difficulty to ask for what you want and what are you doing instead. So that goes to the other shadow when it's um, when you want somebody else is doing something for you and you don't ask uh, for what you want and make a request, when there is no agreement and you want the other person to do it anyway, kind of expectations or exploitation or entitlement or um, the freeloader. So, um, having you know the being privileged i'm i'm a white man and therefore i deserve to be served in the right way for example yeah so so this is where you find the shadow when there is no agreement created and uh, the action is expected and then frustration and uh, disappointment happens or a punishment if not if it's not happened in the right way and people can't lip read and you know all this kind of stuff this is the shadow down there if you can't ask for what you want and what are you doing instead and i did that in the training and i just want to do that here right now as well that if you have difficulties to ask for what you want and you have just a little bit of acknowledgement and compassion for yourself that it's difficult for you to ask for what you want and what are you doing instead, you might have compassion and empathy for other people to ask for what they want and helping them to find what they want. And it's sometimes just a little question, just like, okay, what is it that you like right now? Or what is it that you need right now? Yeah, or can I help you... Uh, to figure out what you want at the moment. So, 
let's go to the other side. Um, because sometimes there are people who have no difficulties and who can ask for what they want. It's not only that they can ask for what they want, they're actually really good in that. And they don't have the shame, they don't have the embarrassment, they don't have all this awkwardness and asking. And they asking anyway, independent if people can express their limits or their boundaries. And if they ask for what you want and you have difficulties to say no, what are you doing instead? First question here is, why don't you say no when people ask for what they want? Why is it difficult for you to say no or to state your limits? Yes, you can do this, but not that. Yes, I can do this, but not that. Yes, this is how long I can do it, but not longer. Yeah, I can do that. No, I cannot do that, but I can do that. You know, so really being good expressing your limits and talking about them. So if you can't express them, if you can't say no or expressing your limits, what are you doing instead of saying no or expressing them? That guides us into the furthers, uh, in th into the shadows first about the opposite dynamic of permission. So if you can't express your limits or your boundaries, this is the shadow of victimhood, of enduring. Trauma is home here or going along with what is happening or being passive. And the other, sh other shadows that comes with the entitlement or the exploitation shadow, so if people don't ask for what they want or they're just making a statement, dishwasher or, you know, something else, and you can't say no and you can't express your limits, this is where you go in action and burn out becoming a pleaser or a do-gooder or the typical martyr dynamic or give to get. Or the nice girl or the nice guy. So these dynamics, they come in pairs. Yeah? So if one person is putting themselves into this corner here in the victim enduring trauma this person will put the other person in the opposite corner and the same is true for this one if one person is putting themselves here they have expectations about the other person and they don't care about their limits they want them to be in action no matter what so this is the way how you find the shadows are there any questions about the shadows? Because the shadows suck. <laughs> they feel dark, they feel horrible, they feel shit. The shadows, nobody wants to admit that they have them. But the shadows have an amazing opportunity to acknowledge our survival strategies and behavior into a place of this is where we have learned to survive and um, got some superpower um, developed. So, any questions so far? Does it, do, yes. Is, then Robert, uh, uh, was it your hand? No, okay. Uh, it looked like. So, is anybody f of you free of shadows? Raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Not free of shadows either. So, the thing is that asking for what you want and going into this action for yourself like we have done that with the object is a lifelong 
process. None of us, me included, is a finished project and none of us has worked it all out. And if I'm in intimate connection with somebody else I don't know, the shadows come all back in again from the ground. <laughs> but maybe the next time it's easier to deal with shame, awkwardness, embarrassment, feelings of rejection and fear of not being good enough or doing the wrong thing or whatever. And that evolves, that changes. So I would like to open up the mic uh, for some questions. Davide, please jump in. So uh, I'm noticing that now I'm more able to say what I need and, and set some limits. For example, okay, you see my kids here, they are participating. Okay. And um, usually when I go to eat with them and the mothers, during eating, uh, the mother speak to, to me directly a lot and I cannot uh, take it because I need to, to be in silent to digest and, and focus on the food. And I noticed that the last two times when we've been to, to eat, I've been sorry, I cannot take uh, the food and you're speaking. Can we finish to eat and then we speak? So I'm starting to do some steps to, to put my limits because Otherwise, I will came, can became nervous or just well, saying something bad or explode and so on. That was the past. But now that I learned to, to, to understand where I am and which kind of shadow they can be. Can I, can I pause you for a moment? Can I pause you for a moment? This is what I say. I, I, when, when I'm in the same situation, I ask a question, can I pause you for a moment? Yeah, and then I say just like this is this is too much to take in at the moment. Can we just? Hang? <laughs> I can't listen to you. I really want to listen to you, but right now I'm I'm overwhelmed with eating and listening, and I really want to hear what you say. But right now I can't listen. So so the the initiation of that is: Can I pause you for a moment? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Was it, oh, oh, oh. How, how, how big is the risk that you get offended? <laughs> well, this is a good question, you know. Um, when, when you say, can I pause you for a moment, people can be offended. Um, you could say, for example, can we just take a breath together? Or, you know... Anybody else has another example of what to say or how to how to do it? Yes, I think for me it would be good to hear something like I'm just overwhelmed right now because if it's like can I pause you for a moment it's more like you're doing something wrong you're being now um, noisy or loud mm. and you you're wrong like in talking so Instead, I would put it, I'm the one who's overwhelmed. So just say, I'm kind of overwhelmed right now. I would like silence, if that's okay, you know, for me, I think. That's great. I love that. Yeah. I'm overwhelmed. I can't listen right now. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I want to, um, I want to say that um, uh, setting limits is, um, it's really a task for me. Yeah, and um, I really have to mm, uh, look after myself in that. Yeah, but um, I'm really getting so much better in it, and um, because I feel more, that's my body tells me better how to set the limits, set limits, and set boundaries. And um, but um, there are really people that really cannot take a no and <laughs> i keep on i really it really pisses me off every time so even after a few times saying no 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 they don't take it so mm -hmm. yeah yeah so 
Yeah, and, and, and then I feel a victim. It's it's like that. Yeah, then I, I, I feel the victim again. So so it's 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 like looping all the time. It's every time there and then there and then there. So yeah. So how how is it when you state your your boundaries and you say no and they can't take the no? Then you start feeling angry. Um Do you judge yourself about being angry? Yeah, I do. Yeah. You know, when you set a boundary and you say stop, anger is the energetic indicator for expressing your boundary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you judge your anger, <laughs> you judge your capability of setting a boundary. <laughs> okay. Good one. Thank you. <laughs> I have I had had something else I wanted to share to you, David. Um, it's in, it was in 2018 or so. I I did a, a a workshop on consent in Berlin with I don't know 20 people, and my kids were there. You know, my and in this time they were just kind of mid you know, beginning mid 20s or so and they lived their own life they studied and they just wanted to know what dad is doing with this work and so they came to this training and I talked about the shadows and the uh, manipulation behind it and what people do to get their needs met and then my kid said oh my god this is what mom is doing <laughs> <laughs> and then they came home after this after this uh, a workshop <laughs> and it didn't <laughs> uh, let's say it that way it definitely put much more oil on the fire <laughs> that I was now <laughs> all of a sudden responsible that she couldn't manipulate <laughs> her kids anymore uh, I wanted to ask a question about uh, about um, like If uh, if two people have like needs or even like kind of boundaries that are like totally contradicting to each other, mm -hmm. like I don't know, like in David's case, if uh, if the woman had asked like, I really want to, I really need you to to listen to me now, telling all this thing that I have on my mind, and I want to, uh, I want to blur it out now could I like can you uh can you listen to me and then he has his boundary on like this is not possible for me I need to have a bit of silence so how do you how do we tackle those situations when they are contradicting yeah this is a this is a great question you know the entire entanglement of human proximity happens in life between the shadows and love and care all the time it's like a parallel paradox you know and um, playing the three minute game in itself is not replacing a conversation or a good fight or something else because the shadows and the connection happen simultaneously but the three minute game and playing the three minute game with the four different dynamics they help you to see where the knots are created and where the entanglement is happening specifically when you have this dynamic straight in a in a you know in in proximity where you say okay i need you to listen for five minutes and not interrupt not say a word and just listen don't speak I just need to say what I need to say. I own up to my feelings, everything that I have to say. Can you just listen? And the other person said, just like, no, I just want to take my own. Yeah, you can talk later. Or maybe you have the first five minutes and I listen. So that you actually have shares. Like we did that in the, in the training with the pots. You know, one person is talking, the other person is listening. And... And again, this is just to show you that there is a time where um, where you can either speak or you either listen. When you have a conversation with your beloved or with family members and you don't have this agreement in place who is talking and who is it for, 
there's most of the time kind of an, a back and forth in that can end up in an argue. <laughs> Because people doesn't feel hurt, people couldn't express what they want to say, and then you have the nice relationship fight. Yeah. So let's say that way having sharing terms does not replace a conversation. So a conversation is a living thing that goes back and forth, and sometimes we need to interrupt each other to clarify things and just to talk about where we are and what's going on. But if that's not possible and one person is dictating the conversation with um, what they want to say and they can't listen and they just want other people to believe what they believe or, or um, putting words in somebody else's mouth or turning the words around, then it's good at this point to make a break and say, um, can I have just five minutes for myself to share? I just need to get something across. I need to say something. So you, you go straight into this dynamic in action for yourself. So you talk, you do, you are in action. And you want the other person to allow to listen, not to respond, but to hear. So bringing it back and forth might be really helpful when you have the feeling that the conversation doesn't go anywhere to say, hey, I need five minutes for myself to speak. Are you willing to listen? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And now you answered like for com communication, but I guess it can also be kind of applied to other other things as well, right? Like to other... Right now, I can't really think uh, like how that broadly, but I'm not sure. Um, but somehow, this giving and taking in in other cases as well that you just have to give the other person his needs or boundaries or what it is, and then get what you need, um, like with some whatever. If it's a time limit or if it's some other limits, I guess. Yep pretty much comes back to the agreement what's what's agreed upon yeah and if there is no agreement at all then sometimes it's necessary to see what's the container or the frame that we're building and sometimes it's not this is not possible and then you know if it's not possible how do you respond or do you obey to somebody else's power dynamic or do you have a smile and just like say okay <laughs> and, and walk aside and um, so, uh, you know, different ways of engaging. But I, I, I would say, you know, when it comes to uh, simultaneous action and simultaneous kind of flow, um, you, you see that this is productive when I talk about the upward spiral, when you feel it's uplifting. Yeah, if it's not uplifting and it goes down towards the shadows and just like, oh, then you know it just needs maybe the approach of taking the action or the conversation just apart and just like, okay, let's let's go back to the basics. And that's how, how I handle it. And our, just a short question. Yes. And if the other one is going anger because you want to speaks and don't want to be interrupted you need to go with the flow because it happened many times you want to set a cont a, a, a frame but the other don't accept it what you do well it just pretty much depends on what the context is and if you have the feeling somebody is dominating a conversation and don't want to listen and only want to put their opinion up upon you then you're totally entitled to express a limit or a boundary and say, I, I don't have this conversation here. So you stop it. I think I just said, wanted to say thank you. And then there is a question in the chat. Can you give some advice on how to stand for your inner voice need boundary when the situation is that you are depending on someone and risk being excluded? Hmm. 
Um, Sabina, thank you for that question. Can you give me a more clear example what that would look like so that I'm not speaking from an um, assumption what I think I read? So so what what I th what I think you're saying is if you're depending on somebody else and you are in a power over dynamic so somebody has power over you and you are uh, risking to be excluded or rejected I think if somebody would use this dynamic of overpowering you um, you didn't have a choice in the first place and I think that sounds to me more like a power over than a power with and the question would be for me if this person could exclude you does this person comes from a place of love and care or does this person comes from a place of control this is how I would answer that does it make sense and I don't know if you Am I allowed to follow up on Sabina's question? Please, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so you were talking about like that would be more like a power or that the uh, oh power over someone, but but like what if that like power over is like coming from someone's like fear or something, and that is just like a temporary thing. So it's not like it's just like a way of handling a specific situation more than actual you understand what I what I mean that it's just but you, you know that uh, uh, that this feeling of being like overpowered is just coming from the other person's fear but you still don't really know how to handle that uh, yeah I think I think um, if if you need to stand for your inner voice and your needs and your boundaries, um, but you are in a position of of fear where there is danger in the place, you're, you know, if 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 you're not a well trained, you know, like a firefighter or a soldier or a police officer or somebody who is working constantly in emergency situation, if you're not trained in that and you're in a position of danger and fear for some reason, your brain is literally switching off and you can't make an empowered choice about the experience that you want to have. And my, my, I wouldn't say advice, but my recommendation is everybody who is in a position where somebody has power over you and, and you can't speak up for your, for your need and for your voice and your boundaries and you are in a position of fear, I would highly recommend to get out of the situation. Yeah. Just like, just make some space. Okay, I just need to leave the room for a moment. Or just like, um, let's 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 stop here and talk on another point. Or let's take a breath or just like, you know, whatever. In in this in this case, if if or if both people operating on fear, fear and anger, um, I would highly recommend actually to really stop this conversation because if you have the feeling it goes down and not up and doesn't go anywhere um, and people can't really express where they are and say what they need and express what they want and the limits, you know, when the shadows are in place and operating, people even don't know that they are in a shadow. And I guess to a degree, this is this level that we all need to train ourselves. How do we come more in the present moment and feeling with what is instead of kind of dwelling down into the shadow dynamics and just like trying to make it right somehow and try to like what we don't like and uh, and, and 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 putting ourselves in, in you know in this position. Um, yeah, going along with something that we actually have no connection to. Yes, hi. Um, just been having thoughts about shadows. Just talking a lot about it, and um, yeah, I experienced when I'm in my shadow, like you say it, or I'm being shown, or 
a light is being cast on my shadows, it's just really painful. And I do not want to hear it. And I do not want to admit it Mm -hmm. and feel like I'm being suffocated or attacked. And it's very, it takes so much to not take it really personally as an attack and just breathe into it and hear it without going into defense. And because sometimes I'm just really tired and I don't want to go into all of this, but then I know it's good for me and it's where I grow. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want to grow anymore. <laughs> I'm tired. And But I know it's good, but this is the thing. It's just, so painful sometimes and uh, and i feel this like wave of exhaustion come over me like do i really need to forever work it's like can we get like burnout of self-development or something <laughs> like is this just like never-ending story um Sometimes I'm in in it and I like it, but it's like sometimes a little bit overwhelming. And um, yeah, a lot a lot to process sometimes when it's a lot. Uh, I, I I like what you say the personal self development burnout. <laughs> just like I just had enough for a while, um, and 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 I guess it's an important point to um stop processing if you're not capable of doing it you know just like take a take a rest take a bath just like just 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 notice you are okay with all the shadows that you have and the shadows are not a life sentence the shadows is nothing that we just need to you know heal ourselves because we are so broken and 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 kaput that we need a fixing you know the shadows is all that stuff when it comes to um recognizing that our personality structure and our shadows and our behavior in some degrees not supportive anymore for ourselves to you know having a loving connection with somebody and then you know if the you know the internal pressure in the worst case creates this internal you know pain about that we can't be in proximity and we don't know how to let go then it's really really needed and necessary to make a shift or a change Um, but as a spiritual discipline kind of this constant hunting for more growth and constant you know we need to process every little thing it's just like that I, I I think life life is too precious and too beautiful to constantly only pr- process and avoid the beauty of the moment, um, um, and and I think I think personally processing is great, but doing it under pressure it's just like it's 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 like you know like spiritual bypassing life. take a good rest and you know and 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 being dedicated to personal growth is great and and every every personal growth needs some integration and you will know when the next step is needed um until then you just enjoy the breath of the wind on the warm skin or you know the 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 warm sunshine on the cold skin i don't know which which side but just like uh don't process yourself into <laughs> into <a> burnout <laughs> i would not recommend that stop st- stop stop pause <laughs> enjoy life that's what all this processing is for to enjoy it more Does that does that make sense to you, Hildo? Processing can be an addiction. I personally love the shadows. I don't think that the shadows are something negative or wrong. I you know the the kind of the messiness of life that we all 
have kind of signed up for, you know, it's just the, the, the it's just like the, sh the shadows are great to see that we're all living beings and, you know, when shit hits the fan and we're just going on a, on a survival mission and something is just really goes south, you know, you need your survival mechanisms, you need your shadows, they're not wrong or bad. They're just like important to acknowledge because we all have them. But, you know, if, as I said, that if shit hits the fan, you know, and you need to get yourself out of a situation, um, your shadows are great. But don't make them your default of being. Make them, um, yeah, accessible when you need them. And beside that, you just be a loving, open, connective, sensual being. I have a question around developing my practice to include the armoring. What's your recommendation for developing an elevator pitch, advertising, etc.? Claire Joy, we see tomorrow, and we can work on that tomorrow. Um, and uh, finding out what your individual um, uh, direction is. Um, Robert Jan, will you please send the slides as a PPT file, what is a PowerPoint file, yes, separate uh, from the recording? Um, I can, uh, thanks for that question. What I can do is, and I don't know, Robert Jan, you are not in the academy, right? Yes or no? No, okay. So, gr great bridge, let's talk about that. So, what I will do now is um, I send here a link with some stuff that I have prepared. So, there, there is a link from the academy from, um, from Mighty Network where I'm doing everything. So, there is an... Um, uh, an event schedule where all events that we do with the Zoom links and everything is on there. There's as well the online course and there's as well the um, um, uh, weekly Monday call links and all that stuff. And um, if you want to have all the slides about that, what we just have done about the shadows, why is it difficult to ask for what we want or what are you doing instead? Um, you find them in the four pillars of relating course. So all material, everything that I have, ex including the book and everything else, you will find there. Um, if you would like to have this as a PowerPoint slide, please send me an email, Robert Jan, and I will create from that keynote slide a PowerPoint slide and send it directly to you. If you want to have it in Dutch... Erica is the person to talk to. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, Robert Jan, you are from Holland, Belgium. I can't hear you. You are unmuted. Hmm. Here. Yeah. yeah, okay. No, there's no need to translate it in Dutch. I can uh, read it in English just as good. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, I have this entire thing translated in German, Italian, English, Polish, Russian, I think even in Chinese, this entire thing. Um, so it's, it's, it's Mandarin, Mandarin, please. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, English is just fine. Perfect. So send me an email. I'm happy to send it to you. Hildur and Gary, there's your hands up. Would you like to ask something? Um, I, I'm. May I just change the subject slightly onto the permissioning, the language? Um, first of all, I'm a native speaker of English, so I don't know the subtleties of the other languages. I can only speak English. So that's where I'm coming from. But in my my belief and experience, is there is a big difference, even though it's not in the nuances of language of the English between can and may. I mean, I may change the subject if given permission. That's asking permission. I could say it in the English language in a more so-called um, polite way and say, can I? But it's not true. I, of course, I can change the subject, but I'm asking you permission. Mm -hmm. So in the English language, a more precise term is may I. 
Mm-hmm. Because can can be used as a manipulation. Can I buy your drink? Mm-hmm. May I buy your drink? Mm-hmm. There is a distinction. And I've learned in my own self-talk is the small distinctive words that operate at a subconscious level. And therefore, it wakes me up. Am I being truly honest? Because if I use the word can when I'm, I can, right, mm-hmm. and I'm using it instead of may, I am manipulating. I'm not being honest with myself or with the other person. Mm-hmm. So I just wonder if that translate to the various languages within the group between can and may and your thoughts on this basis. Yeah, I, I, I love the subtleties of your expertise, Gary. I just uh, love the way how you can dive into different areas. And what I, what I like to say about that is, you know, in years when I was kind of really um, consent rigid, um, uh, you know, I was just saying, okay, this is the formula and this is how it has to be set. And if it's not set this way, then it's just like it probably comes from an avoidance strategies that has been kind of changing pretty much over the last uh, five, six, seven years. Um, and the way how I like to say today is some people have difficulties to ask for what they want. Yeah. And put that in consideration, some people finding bridges and making it easier the way how they speak and if it's easier for some people to say may i or can i is it okay if i um you know it doesn't really matter at the end so 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 every individual needs to find their own formula to be capable of making that request that it works for them in the in in the most precise clear way i totally agree ask may i that's that's the easiest way but or end, it helps people to bridge it into their own capability of finding their own words that it's easier accessible. Sometimes I say, before you make a request, make a statement about your desire. I want such and such to happen. May I do that? Or can I do that? Is it okay that I do that? So you just make a statement and, and then you make an add-on with a request to make that clear and then you just let the other person literally make a choice about their limits how much they are willing to do that and that has made it really really easy for me kind of finding a language that works for me in the moment that it's not always may i and sometimes i say can i is it okay so i, I play with different dynamics and that's my invitation to everybody else so play with different dy- dynamics and use it that it's easy for you to access what your desire is. Coming back to the s- subject before. So here is this thing about the academy. Some of you are in there already. So the invitation to each and one of you is that you can use that link. You can access everything that is there one month for free and if you feel like you want to stay and hang out every monday and come to these calls and ask your questions um what's going on in your profession in your relationship or in your individual life or in you know in your family and you know having difficulties this monday course is a place to come and ask your questions yeah, and all the other material is partly of the academy, so you can download the book, you can join every Wednesday the hands meditation, there's once a month a consent lab. If we have more than seven people, last time I unfortunately needed to cancel because we weren't enough. And I was really happy about that because I was in the middle of the training and I was exhausted and I was happy it didn't happen. So anyway, I was there and then I switched it off. Anyway. If that resonates with you, just check it out for a month and just hang out and be in there and ask questions and connect with people. We are about 100 people in there at the moment. Um, And if you would like to stay, it costs 397 for a year as a subscription. Yeah. So what is literally for 52 calls for the Monday calls is just, I think, how much is it? five euros or something like that for every call so it's just literally nothing so it just literally 
helps to pay the 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 um, expenses that I have to let that run. So. You have a lot of material that you can have access to. You have access to me. It comes with one free individual one-on-one -on -one session if you want to do that. And you help me to keep that thing going because um, it's the kind of platform where I store all the material to share consent and touch and all that with the world. And um, it's not only that you get a lot out of it. You literally help to get the thing uh, staying alive and uh, I would highly um, appreciate that so come along you need to put your credit card credential in this is mighty network it's the American way of making business it's not my way but this is how they are wired you know you just need to put your credit card credentials in and then if you resonate with everything that is there and you want to stay there please stay and that costs you once a month 397 then there is another piece if you say okay i just want to be part of that it's nice and i can use it for my profession or my individual life or for my relationship or whatever everything that i'm offering outside um, you will get a discount for example i have in january with my partner jessica the um, orgasmic blueprint that some of you might know i've written a book that has the same name is mirrored you can't read it <laughs> anyway um, so we have an, uh, the orgasmic blueprint online image uh, emergent where we actually share everything where this dynamic about feeling and touching and playing the three-minute game and sensuality and sexuality and um, the orgasmic potential as a spiritual path where all of that is going so we have an imagine uh, emergent starting 18th of January and if you feel like being part of that and want to bring your relationship to a next level how does all that fits into sexuality and sensuality and in relationship that's the place to join yeah there's as well a whatsapp group um, if you some of you might in there already Give me a second, I'll just drop that link as well. So in that WhatsApp group, so this is where we are kind of um, away from Facebook and, and, and Facebook groups, kind of collecting people and making posts and, you know, what is coming up. And if you want to be just in the WhatsApp group and know what's when and how and where, so please feel free to join there. It doesn't cost anything, it's just free and people are in there and we are the only one posting. And if you have any questions, you can always either reach out on Mighty Network. Um, there's a chat that you can use. Uh, if you really want to know how to get it going, you can book a free onboarding call so that I can guide you through the different areas and how to use it and how it's all um, functioning. Or if you want to know how to create your own network, uh, I can show you how that stuff kind of really works. So it's, it's, it's really beneficial. So, that was it for today. That was the monthly Monday call. I would highly appreciate if you can write a few words into the chat. What's your takeaway if you had one? Go for joy, growing is also fine, yes. The what are you doing instead question stuck me, yes. Great to revisit the shadow and the great questions around the shadows, IG. If you can't ask her what you want, what are you doing instead? Yes, it's 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 big stuff. I love it. Uh, a very good and informative discussion on shadows. Thank you, Nobu. The discussion about conversation that gets stuck. Yes. Take away about the relation judging on my anger and anger is a passion. Yes. My takeaway, heightened interest in the academy access. Yes, please, Robert, come and join. Be part of, you know, the, a lot of the armoring people coming over to the academy. And I love that because the um, the armoring Facebook group just really sucks. <laughs> and we can meet here once a week and ask a question. If you have questions about the armoring, please. In any Monday, if you just want to bring your individual professional experience uh, you know just like 
you can bring that into the Monday calls and uh, or your relationship struggle or whatever. Sometimes I have themes and sometimes stuff pops up based on people who are come and then we just create a theme. You know, it's really communicative. And um, we're working with breakout rooms sometimes and um, you'll love it. It's great. That said, thank you for joining today. And um, I would love to see you on any other Monday. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, take advantage of all the material and enjoy yourself, love yourself and um, play more the three-minute game. <laughs> Ciao for now. Bye-bye. Yes, hearts, flying hearts, and not flying hearts. More hearts. <laughs> All right. Ciao. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to put that into the... Uh, comment section I personally will um, answer them and uh, like and subscribe that helps the algorithm and if you would like to be part of the academy um, come and join the next monthly Monday and I will put a link of the academy landing page of that free month um, straight into the um, uh, section of the video so that you have access to that as well. So if that resonates with you, what I'm doing, what I'm teaching. Anyway, thanks for sticking in here on YouTube and have a fantastic uh, time and might see you on Zoom or in the Academy or on another live stream that I'm doing here on YouTube. All right, take care, much love and uh, ciao for now.